What's up, guys? I am back, man. It's been uh, a while since another C. Roy series, man. These last couple weeks have been crazy. I really want to get back to at least getting out one video a week for you guys. So um, we got a lot of uh, questions stockpiled still. Uh, so today we're going rapid fire again. Well, first question uh, today: What exercises can I do to lose fat around my stomach? This is a common misconception. It's a big myth. You cannot target fat loss at a specific area of your body. Um, you know, I don't know how many times one of my biggest pet peeves is when um, generally it's you know older females. They 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 come up to me and they ask me like, how do I lose this right here? And they'll they'll grab the skin under their arm. It's called gravity, man. There's nothing you can do exercise wise to target fat loss. Um, you can grow muscle. Um, and you can build muscle in specific areas with exercise, but you cannot target fat loss. Some fat around your stomach area, doing a thousand crunches a day is not going to take the fat away from your stomach. The only way to lose body fat is to do it through diet and nutrition, man. Um, and then along with your training and everything else, man, you can't tell your body, you know, take the fat from my stomach first. More often than not, the stomach's the last place it takes the body fat from because uh, that's the first place you will put fat on. Next question. I made a lot of progress early on in my training program in losing weight and getting stronger. But now my progress has slowed, my progress has slowed and I fear it has completely stopped. What can I do to start making improvements again? So if you're brand new to training, and you come into the gym and you start working out and you start eating fairly healthy, you're gonna make a ton of progress in the beginning. Because um, everything is so new to your body, um, all these stresses that you're putting on your body in the gym, everything is brand new. So your body's gonna respond to it very quickly because it's never had anything like this before. So you're gonna get stronger super fast. Um, you're gonna make a lot of progress in the beginning, but then eventually, as you get better, your progress is gonna really slow down and, and this is, it's called hitting a plateau. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. So basically what happens, nine times out of 10, people, you know, they start this program, they'll start going to the gym three days a week, start eating healthy, and they'll do that for three months and they make all this progress, but then fast forward six months down the line, they're still doing that and now they're not getting the same, the same benefit out of it. Um, it's because, you can't do the same thing for too long. A simple way to think about this is like, you know, if I'm just starting to work out and I do, you know, three sets of 10 push-ups, you know, eventually my body, three sets of 10 push-ups, it's gonna adapt to that. That's why you get better in the first place. It's all revolved around this principle of adaptation. So when you were starting out, your body never experienced three sets of 10 push-ups before. But now that you've been doing three sets of 10 push-ups for six months, it's nothing new anymore. Your body has already adapted to it. It doesn't need to, to do anything else because it can, it can handle that. So the reason you're hitting a plateau is because you're still using the same stimulus, the same stresses that got you to where you are right now. So right now, you are better than you were than when you started. So in order to get even better now, you have to incorporate and introduce your body to new stresses, um, harder things. So now instead of three sets of 10 push-up, maybe now we're doing three sets of 20 or we're doing six sets of 10. Um, you, have to comp you have to keep pushing the envelope, man. You have to keep progressing, whether it's you know more weight, um, more reps, less rest. There's a ton of different things you can do in your training program need to be up in the ante and, and giving your body something new, something it hasn't seen yet to force it to adapt, force it to get stronger and, and force it to progress so you can start to see those gains again. Um, but even still, the longer you've been doing these things, the harder it's going to be to keep progressing. You will never progress like you did in the beginning. Um, you will progress so fast in the beginning and it will never come that quickly again. Uh, because you're getting closer to your athletic potential. Next question, should children lift weights? 
Yes and no. So, and also depends on age. So, I mean, kids, regardless how old they are, they're picking up weights. You know, whether they're playing with their toys and stuff, they're picking things up. Kids are, are lifting things, they're playing, they're running, they're, they're doing these things naturally every day anyways. Um, I'm not saying that you need to start to um, strength train with your children. So, um, lift, lifting things and, and just using their body is great. Um, and there's absolutely room for that. Um, I don't like to legitimately start strength training with kids until they've hit puberty. Um, and when I say strength train, I mean like legitimately loading their spine. Um, you know, things like back squats, deadlifts, things of that nature. But even then, they have to earn the right in order to do those movements. Um, there's a, 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 a big assessment and screening process that I put my athletes through before I even think about loading their spine or anything like that. They have to show me that they're proficient uh, in fundamental movement patterns and everything like that before we start to load load those movements with barbells and, and extra weights. You know, a lot of times what I work on with those kids is just um, body awareness, strengthening their joints, uh, you know, giving them some stability. Um, and, and, and teaching them proper fundamental movement patterns. And yes, we use some weights with those things, things like very light goblet squats, um, overhead holding with very light weights. So yes, there are weights involved, but I'm not loading their spine. So legitimate strength training, I say wait until puberty, but there's a ton of things that uh, kids can do pre-puberty that will help them big time. So yes and no, depending how you look at it. All right, last question here. Um, what's better, machines or free weights? Um, the age old question here. <sighs> I never really necessarily like to say anything is better than another thing or anything like that. I don't like to speak in absolutes because um, there's a place for everything. So I've worked in a Globo gym before, you know, with, with all the circuit equipment and all, the, all those things, um, and they have their place. It all depends on the person, man. Um, you know, obviously, if I'm training an elderly person, that's looking for some resistance training just to keep their muscles from atrophying. Um, machines are great, man. It, it keeps them safe. They can sit down. They're, they're, they're secure. They don't have to stabilize anything. Um, they can just work the muscle, uh, send signals to the muscle to keep it alive, to keep it working, to keep it from decaying. Um, so, you know, absolutely machines have their place. If I'm training an athlete or, or somebody um, younger that's, you know, looking to become athletic or, or, or put some size on, whatever it may be. I like free weights more, man. Uh, for me personally, I love free weights. Um, you know, the, the, the drawback with machines is, you know, there is no stability involved. You don't have to stabilize anything. Um, you know, nine times out of 10, you're sitting down um, and, and performing an exercise. Um, you know, a seated leg press machine, you know, doesn't translate to being able to do a proper squat. So, you know, people that live on the leg press, then they get in everyday life and they can't even perform one of the most basic fundamental movement patterns. So, um, it can hinder your body's performance if you rely on them too heavily. So, um, my answer is depending on the person, man. All right, we'll end it there, guys. Um, good questions, I appreciate it. Keep them coming, send them to me. Like I said, it's been a while since I did one of these videos. Uh, it's just been crazy busy, but I'm really gonna start to try to get back to one a week, so um, keep them coming. If you like the video, like it, share it, send it out to people. Most of all, subscribe to the channel, especially if you wanna be a healthy, jacked, badass 